Hello one and all, I am Pal of Games, that was a terrible intro, and uh, yeah, so today we are back with Mage in Arena, yes, well yesterday was terrible to be honest, it went badly, we was winning so well and then just things came crumbling down, but today we're not going to let that happen, we're not going to let Hearthstone just ruin our fun time, we're going to go in there, we're going to get some wins, we're going to have fun, <laughs> hopefully, Half hour of pure ownage. Because I do believe the deck's viable. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, it's arena, so you know. Can always be better. I mean, I, I didn't get a uh, pyro blast. It would have been really nice. That is actually quite a nice hand. I quite like that. Early on, you know, I've got plays. Hunters are really interesting class because it seems to do quite well against Mage in terms of being able to rush down. But if you make it to sort of, I feel the later you go, you know, that card's just, that power is just so intense because of the fact that you can just hit for two every turn. I mean, you can eat, I mean, it takes 15 turns worth of using that to win. Now that sounds like a lot, but when you factor in the fact that you're also going to be doing damage with early with a lot of rush down because that's what the deck specialises in, I feel it does make for some interesting uh plays. Now I didn't obviously have anything there, but I've got quite a lot of free t uh, next turn and from then on I've pretty much got some pretty nice support going for me. I've obviously got an early charge and uh I feel that's what they really lack in Hunters. They have no, like, little AoE going. Which is why it's nice to use it early on. I mean, sure, he can hit me for two every turn with that. But they're, they're really good at swarming with creatures. But outside of that, they're not really great. I mean, they have some really interesting secrets going for them, yeah. Spells not so much so, I would I'll say. Never tell. So he went with a uh, pretty interesting play there. I'm wondering how, what, well, what is best to uh, deal with that, and whether it's more beneficial to just hit it with frostbolt. And I think it probably is. So that's what I'm going for. Has he got misdirection? Explosive trap. Okay. That I'm okay with. I've got water elemental, which is going to be really nice because it's going to be able to uh, soak up a lot in terms of uh, damage. Because beasts tend to have quite nice creatures, but only really work well when there's a lot of them on the field because they sort of benefit from each other. You've got Starving Buzzard who gains draw power when another beast is played. You've got the tim is it Timber Wolf. I know it is something Wolf where it gives um, me other beast minions 1-1s. One You've just got stuff like that which really adds up. So it's going for a big play here it would seem. Be interesting to see what that play is. We must cleanse okay, that's an uh, interesting one. Shame we didn't get any blizzards, because that would be quite nice. We did get Stormwind Champion though, so that could be quite useful here actually. I mean... Friendly Beast. Is it when one dies? Yeah. So actually that's not a bad play at all here. For honor. It's going to allow me to get at least a, uh, another potential trade out of it. I mean, if he hits it now, I'm going to be able to fireball. So, he kind of, he needs sort of a charge beast here to really gain some value. That could be misdirection, in which case I could be in a bit of trouble. It depends. And he follows that with a fleshy and ghoul. Now, that is a very nice play, I would say. Just how he's played that, uh, I just kind of just really like it, to be honest. I'm kind of left with an ultimatum now as to what to hit. But that obviously guarantees a lot more value. 
sure that's a 4 3 I've got to contend with now. But. I'm actually considering a fireball now. Just so that it can't get out of control. Maybe Divine Shield and I, I just soak up one hit. Of uh, damage directly, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, sure, we don't want to gain too much advantage because of a steady shot we've discussed. But I feel we've got to take a few mini risks now and then in order to ensure that you're uh, really going to uh, succeed. Because sometimes you think these attacks, like uh, using Fireball now, would be beneficial, but late game it could not be. So you've really got to evaluate that. The real problem I've got now is. I'm thinking if I use this and I get lucky and I hit that one so I can fireball it so I can take out both because I feel that's the only way I'm going to get some real value going. And I did. So I've got really lucky there, to be honest. Now I feel there's a good chance he might go for some big hit play here. So just in case he has, I'm going to have a mirror entity on standby. Because I feel if he's got a big card now, he's liable to play it because he's feeling that, you know, there could be some problems. He will obviously try and scout around that by playing a weaker creature, I feel. But I'm going to do it now because I feel that I need to. Now, that isn't the best because obviously I won't get a battle cry. But on the other hand, it is still a 2-3 and that's quite good in my books. Because I can trade off quite efficiently here. In fact, I don't even need to uh, trade off that because I can fireball it. Hmm. That is really interesting how he's done that. I like that. It doesn't make a difference to how I'm going to play the turn much, really. Because what I'll do is I'll hit that. Hit like that. Knock over his... Uh, Then I'm just going to be able to uh, sort of play around with what I can do. Definitely going for the uh, taunt here. Just to try and avoid Razor Fin getting hit by that uh, boar. I can't think what it's called. Where it's a 1-1 one -one charge. Because obviously that would be quite beneficial here. And he's, he's wanting to play it because it's a beast. It would take advantage of stuff like Starving Buzzard and the Hyena. Hmm. That was an interesting card. Just to uh, see out of the blue. It's really not a threat. I mean, if he draws once, he gets sort of his money back, if you like. But outside of that, it's not going to be really worth much. And he didn't get value. So uh, we're going to hit quite heavy here. Not necessarily at him. But in terms of taking out a lot more cards... So here I'm thinking I can drop the water elemental and the vaporize. And now I'm starting to build up that at sort of task force to take him out. Because he's running low on cards now and to be honest I've still got quite a lot in the tank in terms of two fireballs if he plays a big card. He's basically trying to stall for time because that's the only way he's going to win here. On the off chance that it's uh, if it's an explosive trap actually that could be quite problematic so I should definitely hit with this just in case see what it is and it was an explosive trap okay that is kind of problematic but I'm still going to hit him regardless I've just got to hit him as hard as po possible as quick as possible now I've got quite a lot here. I mean, if he takes that out, he takes another two damage. One damage from this. Six damage here. I mean, I'm kind of on top of this in a way. He is a big thing in there, though. He is required to be around to be uh, useful. If that's an explosive trap, I think he's used he's used two so far. But if, if he's got a third, I mean, he's done well. <laughs> that's for sure. I'm going to play this now, even though it's a risk. In fact, if it's a misdirection, it could go really bad on me. You call that a hmm. 
I will go for the risky play though, I think. I'm going to attack with left gnome in case it's a misdirection. It's another explosive trap. That is getting on my nerves. I've got to say. I'm trying to hope to just be able to take him out here. I mean, he needs a creature or a way of taking out this now, or he loses. He needs a taunt or a card to take this out. Like, uh, <coughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, if he has another... That's a sea giant. That's worth playing, but it doesn't do anything for him. So I'm going to take it he's conceding in a way. He can attack anyway because I have that vaporize saved up. So even if he has like a, a charge. Oh, and I've drawn to a polymorph. So that's hilarious. Let's just shout it off to him just to annoy him. And that is game, guys. We are doing well. Glad. So that's 1-1 one, one now, we're, we're, we're shifting back into position. Really we should be 2-0, but you know, we DC'd once, so you know, it happens. We're going to play again, we're going to own it up like a absolute mother trucker, hopefully. Hmm, we've got 17 minutes to play in terms of being within that half hour range. <sighs> I just find it's a really nice time. It's how programming works. It's half an hour. I just feel it's a really nice format. I know some people like to... Uh, I've seen a lot of Hearthstone where it's just been quite long-winded. I get it. People actually quite like that some, most of the time. But I don't know. I think sometimes people might benefit from going, Oh, well, it's half an hour. You know, if I want to watch one now, I'll watch one later. That's fine. Or I can just, you know, just watch one now. And uh, maybe I can fit one in later, you know what I mean? An hour just seems like quite a long length of time. Hmm. I'm considering getting with uh, Raging Worgen. But, to be honest, it's not bad. Uh, Priest, in terms of how it versus against Mage, I feel that... It depends how well the uh, Priest is constructed, mostly. Because I feel that a really good priest deck can take out mage most of the time. I mean, a deck I did see with mage was where they used Gorobashi Berserker. So every time, and um, what they did was they played this card. I can't remember what it's called. But what it does is it makes its attack equal to its health. So it made it a 14, well it weren't, it was a 7-7 seven, seven originally. So it made it 7-14. Is that right how he did it? Ah, that's what he did. It was uh, health equal to its attack, and what he did, he powered it up, and then just made its attack, uh, its health to 14. What I was like, that's do? crazy. What you know, you've just gone and made some really crazy move there. That RNG didn't quite work out as well as it would have been if it had hit him again, obviously. Uh, I can't ping it because it's like just totally impervious to that. Like my so that kind of was a mute point. I would really like to draw into the other one. I don't think I have to. I can't remember. Uh, I don't really want to play out because I know what's going to happen. If I use this now, he will just uh, take it out. I suppose in a way it's worth playing now. Because at least if anything it will be a magnet for that. I don't really want to. I, I've just realised he can heal it, so you know, could potentially do that in terms of beforehand, so that another one wouldn't have mattered. I'm just kind of thinking, is this the best thing to do? I didn't really want to, but I feel that if I didn't, it'd be really awkward to take out. He's one of them cards, which just seems awkward. And he's played another card with, the ex with just the complete impression that, you know, I can get more out of it. And I kind of have nothing better to do at the minute than just sort of ping that, but doesn't even really do anything for in terms of I'm going to get hit for two, which ain't great. But I feel that it just allows him that magnet against vaporize. 
having that there, you can just go hit. You kind of want to put Vaporize in a position where they've only got big hitters to choose from. Like I said, he would heal it, so it's made it annoying for me. You, you see how I say that, you know, they're just able to do this? Just annoy the hell out of you. <laughs> Hmm, that will actually trigger that, so that's terrible. I kind of want to wait, so I'm going to take 5, as well as that 2. So I'm on 15, at least. But, I feel that I've got to weather the storm first, before I can take advantage of stuff. Maybe some walker's good now, thinking about it. Just because it's going to allow me some protection. I mean, to be honest, I've played this quite badly. But I've kind of had no choice, in a way. He's got two choices here. He can either go for the more efficient Yeti attack with the magnet. Or just Holy Fire, you know, why not? <laughs> that is a really good card, I've got to be honest. It's one of their power cards, really. And I'm trying to think about how I can get around this now. Because it's going to be tricky. I think I'm able to hold him off, but not necessarily stop myself from taking damage. I'll play this out just in the uh, terms of trying to get Demolisher to hit that instead, just as a bit of a magnet, and it has. So at least I'm a bit safer, but not mu by much. I've really got just towered over here. And it's not good at all. That is just an ouch. Because uh, I don't think... I could have really done with a flame strike, to be honest. And I just didn't get it. Maybe a Zordrake's going to help me through this. I'm trying to think. I think he's got me, to be honest. Yeah, he has. So we're just going to let him own me here, really. There's not much I could do. Death by Demolisher, wow. Ouch. So that's made, made me 1-2, that's terrible. Probably the worst run I've had. Well, we have some time still, I suppose. So I tell you what, we'll go play a rank game quickly. It's easier to play, to be honest. We will show off a uh, hunter. My hunter deck's okay. It needs a lot of work, to be honest, but that's okay. I want to sort of give you a half hour's worth, because we just still have 12 minutes left, so... I think I've got 12 minutes left. That's about what I think it is. However... At least we've won one. <laughs> That's something, at least. I suppose we can be like the comeback kid and go, 9-2. Nah, it's not going to happen. It annoys me when people say that card games are completely luck. Because in the sense of actual collectible card games, are not actual like stuff like poker and stuff. Even though that has some slight skill in sort of bluffing. The whole skill, mainly, is in deck building, so that's why you don't realise that there is a lot of skill in the game, because you've got to go, what is the meta, meta being, you know, what is mainly played in terms of the game in general, and then you go to yourself, right, well, if that's the meta, what will I need to use in order to combat that meta? And it's, I feel it's just a game where well, any card game, really, where you have to understand the game really well to understand why a gate card is good or bad. And to be honest, a lot of times you can go, well, this normally this card is bad, but when I put it with this, this and this, it's actually really good. And you've got to really understand synergy and stuff like that to understand pacing. There's just a lot to a card game what can be easily just missed if you don't truly get why you know that why a card is 
why uh, there's a lot of skill in it, to be honest. And I've got to be honest, some plays are just so funny to watch. Sometimes, you know, it can be just really lucky that a, way, a game has gone a certain way. And it can be just really ridiculous. I mean, one of my most ridiculous plays in terms of... Uh, not necessarily half stone, but you go because I like card games in general. I play most of them, so it's okay to integrate. I feel just try and say, hey, card games in general are awesome because why not? You know, I don't discriminate against any card game. To be honest, you know, if someone goes, hey, you play that card game, so you're you, you're not as good as me because I play this card game. I'm just like, just no, <laughs> just no, guys. <laughs> why are you doing this? I want the top guy here, and I get Leok. Leok's not bad actually here, because he can trade off quite efficiently. I'm trying to think what he could play, which would just wreck him at the minute, and I feel very. I'm trying to think. I mean, weapons. There's that free two axe, but I would still mean trading off one of his creatures. So I've kind of picked like one of. Quite a good card here. I mean, they, they all them random ones would have been good, except for that charge. So, what could he have here, which would make it worse? Well, that a timber wolf or a bright leader would have been bad, but uh, not a bright leader, a raid leader. Sorry. If he hits that, I'll be interesting. I've obviously got a multi shot lined up, so. Kind of think to self, do as you want, matey. <laughs> what I'm actually going to do is hit first. Because I didn't really want that one, one, one two just getting hit, because it, it would kind of make it a bit of a waste. Whereas now, he has to trade off and lose his card, and I don't, unless he obviously has that axe, which I was talking about, because that would be really efficient for him. It's why I found Ooze to be a really good card to play in most decks. It's a really nice splash card. I, wonder. I feel what uh, Warrior could do with is a card which like benefits from him having armour. If he came out with a weapon which was Warrior-specific, where it was like... This gains an attack equal to the amount of armor you have. I feel that would be really cool. Idea for you guys at Blizzard. <laughs> I've got quite a few moves I could make here. I'm trying to think what would be best. I could get some really good draw power here. So I think I will. <laughs> Simple as that. That should really annoy him. Trade off quite nicely, and it's left me with a free free, a free one, and a one one. And he sort of has to target that here, otherwise I'm just going to gain even more draw power. It's kind of leave, left as a almost a level heading. I mean, he's eight health above me. Uh, I've got a card advantage by one, I think. What is it now? Four. So six on seven at the minute. Okay. I feel that he will probably uh, take that back in terms of... Uh, I'm trying to think what's the most efficient way of doing this. He could hit this definitely with that. Even though I would rather do it like that. Because even though you lose this, you're kind of going to lose it to the other anyway. At least you keep that, even though it's kind of irrelevant. That's how I would do it. He could do two damage, so you could argue that's why he's doing it. Get that extra damage in, but... I don't know. I 
I was thinking about that, but then I saw that this is an option. So what I can do here is keep my creature. I feel that was more efficient, so I went with that. Because whereas I could just use it, I've, it's kind of like you've used it, that's it. Whereas this, I've kept it, so I've got at least one trade off of it. And it's also set me up quite nicely for stuff like next time I can just throw out the blood fen, hit him. Although I'm not in the illusion that I'm going to keep him, I feel that if it does happen that way, I'm really set up well. Ah, uh, get behind me. So now do you see why it was a good idea to keep the kill command? Then again, it's a good idea because I've got this. <laughs> hmm. How do I want to play this? I feel like it's not a bad idea to just go with this. I lose the attack boosts, but it's okay. I'm going to put a bit of pressure on. I could have gone for the uh, direct shot there. The steady shot, even. I call it direct shot because that's what it is. But by playing that, I've put a lot of pressure on, and it means what, what he plays now. Is severely just put at a disadvantage because I feel blood fence like great. Sure, it's no ooze, but in a beast deck, it works magically. Now I've got that, so that's not even an issue. I believe that still works. And he does have that axe, which I was talking about. So here it comes into play. He can either hit me direct and hope to rush me down further. But the thing is, he's sort of come to a stage now where he's ran out of steam. And that bonus isn't going to help him to keep that sort of momentum going. That's one of the main sort of complaints with that card is. And I seem to be able to. So that's really nice. Now that's an issue, because he can take that out. So what I'm going to go for is this play, because it's going to mean that it's protected now. And furthermore, by playing this... I gave that attack boost, so I can now sort of put a lot of pressure on him to go for something good. He can obviously hit it with that. That's sort of mag that's good, good magnet. However, he can't because of a taunt. So you know, even I'm just thinking, you know, what's possible for him? I think he would probably have loved last turn to have been able to take out that raptor, and I've really ruined it for him now. And he has that cobra. Hmm. What is good now? I feel kill commanding it is a good idea. Wait a minute, have I got lethal? I have. Sometimes you get quite uh, quick to do stuff and then you realise why am I even doing that? I've won. So woo, that was fun. And we are about dead on, to be honest, time wise. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. If you have liked, I would like if you could leave a like. Leave a comment below on uh, what you, you know, your thoughts on Hunter is. Or just thoughts in, on classes in general. And uh, other than that, let me know what you think will be my end score in Arena. For Mage, anyway. I will go through all the classes if I can, you know. If randomly I manage to do it in that way. But uh, other than that, I say uh, thanks for watching goodbye, and uh, goodbye. Yeah, great. <laughs> Intros and outros, guys. Not been doing them well. <laughs>